Good evening. Welcome, everyone, to this very special event. If everyone can please find their seats. There's plenty of seats over here. And in the front over here for the men, if everyone can please find their seats. If you have any food, please take it to your seats. I want to welcome everyone to this very special event. We have the great honor to hear from Rabbi Yaakov Mizrahi. From all the way, came all the way from Brooklyn. We're going to hear from him momentarily. I want to thank the Bethka Real Community Center for hosting tonight's event. They deserve a round of applause for hosting tonight's event. As, as we know, the Chazak organization has so many different divisions and, and programs for the community. So many different amazing shiurim and events that inspire so many people. With uh, Chazak's main focus is on public school outreach programs with over 20 different after school program locations to inspire the, um, our, our fellow brothers and sisters. Who are, who are in public school, hundreds of students every single year. And we have a special division called Public School Yeshiva, which has transferred over 1,500 children from Public School Yeshiva since 2017. And one of our newest divisions is this division, which we're here tonight for, is the Chazak Connection Division, which is dedicated in memory of Ima Shalom Bat Bityo, Neshama Shehavan Aliyah, Amen. And we want to thank all the amazing Shad Khan Yot, um, and um, we want to give them a round of applause for dedicating their, their time for, for all their help. And uh, we want to, of course, after the lecture, there's going to be amazing food in the back. And of course, please speak to each of the, introduce yourself to the amazing Shadchan Yod who have, who have given up their time to, to help each and every one of us. And um, it, is our, it is our great, great honor to call upon the director of Chazak, Rabbi Ilam Mirov. Please rise for some open remarks. Okay, Shavua Tov, Morai Rabotai, ladies and gentlemen. It's a tremendous honor for me to be here tonight. I did not come here to lecture to give you guys any divrei Torah. Baruch Hashem, my good friend Rabbi Yaakov Mizrahi is very inspirational. He'll take care of that department. I just came here right now to basically share some akarata tov, gratitude to certain people, and also to share our vision for the future, Bezrat Hashem. So, first things first. You know, most of you know Chazak for all the shiurim that we do throughout the community. You know, that we have a kolal here in New York and Eretz Israel. But obviously our main mission is the public school kids. We have programs for children in public schools, teenagers in public school. We have yeshiva placement division, Baruch Hashem. And one thing that we tried doing over the years but never really pushed for was this division that we're talking about here tonight, Chazak Connections. Shiduchim. Aksaros, all your Bukharians here, Baruch Hashem. Anyways, Shiduchim is, uh, is something that so many good guys and girls are looking for their other half and they're having some obstacles. Oh, Hashem, life has obstacles. And Hashem commands us to do Ishtadlut, to put our effort. So with this division that was started, Mamash, at the end of the 20, 2023 uh, year, I believe we're in December time, our goal is to help people find their other half. Baruch Hashem, in about six, seven years, we were able to make 1,600 shiduchim between public school kids and yeshivot. 1,600 kids transferred from public school to yeshivot. Our goal is, Bezrat Hashem, to get 1,600 guys and girls to get married, Bezrat Hashem, as well. Amen. But many more, and we're not going to stop there. Amen. So this division, like I said, started. It was dedicated to Nishmat Ima Shalom Bat Bitya, a young lady that passed away. A number of years ago, but Baruch Hashem, her family wants to do good things, and hopefully the shiurim, the zivugim, everything that goes on will be for her, Aliyah Nishama. I want to take this opportunity to thank, you know, to put together such an event, you got to have a lot of uh, bulldozers to get involved, as they say. You know, one of the toughest, I think, jobs in the world, you know, people think rabbis just put up his zuzot at events and they go to Brit Milaz. Baruch Hashem, we have a tough job as well. We deal with a lot of difficult situations. But, believe it or not, people in the shidduch industry, it's actually maybe just as tough, if not even tougher. Because you know how it is. When someone does a good shidduch, no one really hears about it. If something goes wrong, they're public enemy number one. And it's not easy. It's a lot of uh, uh, internal uh, frustrations that go on in the shidduch world. So, Bemet, we have 
a number of ladies that work within Chazak, and then we have a number of ladies that work with the community in general that are really teaming up together to work on your behalf, to become your shluchim, your messengers, to help you find Bezrat Hashem Yizivuk. So I just want to quickly run through the names in no particular order. But the three ladies are within our Chazak division are Mrs. Ksenia Baruch. We can give her a nice uh, round of applause over here. <laughs> Mrs. Angela Meirov and Mrs. Berta Kuyenov. Right, thank you very much. Hashem should bless all of you, Bezrat Hashem. And the other ladies that are running around here in the community doing so much work. We have, uh, I like to call her the Rebbitzin, the president, Mrs. Sarah Chaim of Sanding over here. That's uh, Baruch Hashem doing a lot for Am Yisrael. Uh, Mrs. Ricky Chafisov, thank you very much. My cousin, Chagid Kaikov, God bless you and your family, Bezrat Hashem. Uh, Mrs. Rivka Mirov, thank you very much. Mrs. Daphna David as well. And last but not least, Mrs. Rina Gilkarov, everyone should be blessed by Kodesh Baruch Hu and everything that you do, Bezrat Hashem, Barach. Did I miss anyone, Chaz Shalom? I hope not. I miss someone? No, anyone else that's helping out, I met Tonami Korolev. If I miss you, it was not intentional. God forbid, Chaz Shalom. So everyone, Bezrat Hashem, tonight after the Shiur, we encourage you to speak to the, to the Shadchaniyot. You see some, someone that might be a, a good match, talk to them about it. And Bezrat Hashem, they will reach out to you. And we hope to eventually do events. Once we get a large database, we'll make targeted events for men and women of certain age brackets. That's going to be a VIP event. We're also going to have separate events for men and women just to give you guys tips on dating as well. Uh, so we're trying to build a real massive. You have to be patient when it comes to these things. And Bezrat Hashem, hopefully, we're going to all be celebrating a lot of weddings in the upcoming year. Bezrat Hashem, mit barach. Without further ado, I'd like to call upon a good friend of mine, Rabbi Yaakov Mizrahi. He's a young rabbi. I got to speak to him once or twice when he was a rabbi in Israel. Now, Baruch Hashem, he, uh, he was sent back here to New York with his family. Does a lot of Arbatat Torah, teaching Torah in Brooklyn, but really all over New York. And Baruch Hashem, he agreed to come speak here today. So please give a round of applause to Rabbi Yaakov Mizrahi. B'chavad Everybody, it's a zechut to be here. Thank you, Rabbi, for the humbling words. Hashem shmerecha, you have tremendous hatzacha and beracha b'chol maasei adecha be'ezrat Hashem. Rabbi Meirov, his brother, Rabbi, the entire Chazak team, what you do for Am Yisrael, and specifically the Bukharian Jews of here in Queens, which is a tremendous amount underrated. Really, what you do is phenomenal. The PSTY, one of my favorite programs that you have, and now. The Shiduch program that you have, which was made in Lunishmat Ima Shalom, but Bitya, Tir Nishmata, Tsirura, Bitsrora, Hayim, you should have tremendous continuous Siata, Dishmaya, Bechol, Maaseya, Decha, like Dil Torah, La Dira, you and your brother, the entire team. Really, it's a Zechut to come out to Queens. It's a Tfilat Aderech also, round trip. And <laughs> there's got to be a quicker way to get here, Bezat Hashem, but really, it's a pleasure to come here. And you should have continuous hatzacha b'chol ma'asei adecha, amen. And of course, to Rachamim and to any time for everything that they do, spreading Torah and Am Yisrael. Hashem yishmor etchem tatzlichu v'tazkilu b'chol ma'asei adechem l'agdil Torah l'adira b'toch osher osher u'biut v'chol milet emetav, amen. I'll tell you the truth. I'm telling you now, honestly, I have no clue what I'm doing here tonight. I'm not a shadchan, and I love to, it's a zechut halavai. I'm not exactly sure um, what you think I'm talking about, at least. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? Do I know what I'm talking about? But one thing is for sure, so long my wife doesn't come into this class, we're in good company. If she walks in, then she came in for the ride. She had to make a phone call, I think, in the car. Maybe she's taking care of the kids on the phone. So, so long she's not uh, here, then I think we're all right. Once she comes in and she finds out that this is about Shiduchim, oh, you're speaking about Shiduchim. You, I forget it. It's going to be uh, early Purim. But uh, in the meantime, Beruchim Habayim, everybody, it's great to see you. And Bezat Hashem will be Zuchir to see Mashiach Tzirkenu Bekarov and the building of the Beit HaMikdash. Amen. Okay. 
I think my wife is here. So let's talk about the parasha, maybe. Okay. So speaking about the Beit HaMikdash, Morav Rabotai, what you're doing here today is one of the greatest things that you will ever do in your life. Building a home just to put the groundwork, just to make it clear to everybody, in case anyone's wondering, building a bayit, getting married, the importance, maybe explain, Rabbi, it is equal to building the Beit HaMikdash. So coming to an event and learning about the importance of getting married is no less than learning about the importance of the Beit HaMikdash. And I'll prove it to you. Parashat Vayetzeh. Yaakov Avinu. On his way out, he's already 63 years old. He got the Berachot from his father. And he's going out of Eretz Yisrael. And then he has a dream. He sees a sulam, utzav arza, v'rosho magia hashamayma. Unbelievable, what a dream. And our rabbis tell us that that dream happened in the makom of the Beit HaMikdash and he had a nevuah, a prophecy of the Churban Beit HaMikdash. That is the beginning of Parashat Vayetzeh. What is the next thing that Yaakov Avinu does? He goes and he gets married. And he's going, he meets Rachel, gets married to Leah, gets married to Rachel, Bilha, Zilpa. Unbelievable. Yaakov Avinu, you are the holiest men that ever walked on the face of the earth. What are you doing going to get married? Something that looks so mundane, it's so earthly. You're one of the holiest men on earth. You just saw a prophecy of the Khurban Beit HaMikdash. And the next part of the parasha, Vayetzei Yaakov, he's going to get married, he's having children, and the Shevatim are born. Yaakov, what are you doing? That's exactly what he's doing. He saw a dream of the Khurban Beit HaMikdash. He's going to build the Beit HaMikdash. Vasuli Mikdash Vishakhanti Betocham. Here we are around 24 hours after finishing Sefer Shemot, Parashat Pekudeh, four parashiot where we speak about the Mishkan. Talk about building a Mishkan, Murayv Rabotai, getting married is building a Beit HaMikdash, no less than building a Beit HaMikdash. One of the greatest things you will ever do in your life is get married. Have no safik about it, and you can just imagine why maybe there's a Yetzir Hara. Someone might have, ah, Rabbi, he might start being picky and hesitant, who to get married to, and he might not know the importance of getting married. Murev Rabotai realize that getting married is one of the greatest things you will ever do in your life, Be'ezrat Hashem. And the beracha that you get when you get married, you can't even imagine how great your life is, Bezat Hashem, once you get married. The Gemara Masechet Yevamot tells us, Kol hasharui below isha, whoever doesn't have a wife, sharui, he is left without Torah, he's left without simcha, he doesn't have, his life is completely different. So building a bayit, is by far and by large one of the greatest things that anyone can do in their life. I'll prove to you from another way how great it is to build a bayi, to build a home, and to get married, how great it is. We know that crying is not something that our rabbis do for nothing. Rav Mordechai Gifter, the Rosh Yeshiva, Zechir Sadiq Livracha, when he was a little boy, he was once lost in the forest. And he started crying. And as a little boy, he stopped himself and he said, why am I crying? Because I'm lost. They'll find me. If I'm already crying, let me cry for something significant. And he starts crying for the Beit HaMikdash, for the Khurban Beit HaMikdash. Unbelievable. He turns those tears from tears of crying over not being found. <clears throat> and he starts crying for the Beit HaMikdash. Something amazing is if you look in Sefer Bereshit, we see numerous times that tzaddikim or tzaddikot are crying. And if the Torah is telling us that great people are crying, we should stop and think, why are they crying? They're not crying because they didn't win the, the, the mega million. They're not crying because they uh, lost a few dollars. Whenever tzaddikim are crying, they're crying for something big. So let's look through Sefer Bereshit. 
and see which Sadiqim are crying and let's see why they're crying. Well, we know that Abraham Avinu cried. We know that Yaakov Avinu cried. We know that Yosef and Binyamin cried. We know that Leah cried. Why did Yosef and Binyamin cry? Well, Yosef and Binyamin, they cried on each other's shoulders. And Rashi tells us, for the Khurban Beit HaMikdash, which was in the Chilik of Binyamin, and the Khurban, the destruction of the Mishkan, which was in the Chilik of Yosef. Yosef and Binyamin are crying, but again, for something real. They're crying for the Khurban Beit HaMikdash, for the destruction of the temple. They're, they're, they're crying over the Khurban of the Mishkan, the lack of the Mishkan. That is something real. I understand why Yosef and Binyamin are crying. But why is Le'a crying? Why is Yaakov crying? Why is Abraham crying? Abraham cries. You know when he cries? When Sarah Imenu, his wife, passes away. Yaakov cries when he sees Rachel and Rashi gives two perushim wine, the second perush, when he finds out that he's not going to be buried next to Rachel. Leah cries because she doesn't want to marry Esav. Tzadikim are crying when it comes to marriage. The lack of a spouse. That is something that is equal to the destruction of the Beit HaMikdash. Rightfully so, Avraham Avinu cries when he loses his wife. That's like losing the temple. Leah cries. She doesn't want to marry Esav. Yaakov cries because building a home with a spouse is equal to building the Beit HaMikdash. And with that, we could explain Maybe why the halakha is that when we build our homes, we have to leave a zikr, a remembrance for the Khurban Beit HaMikdash. We have to leave a space in our home empty, meaning don't fill it completely. Leave it a little bare. Don't paint it all the way. You have to leave it with the sheetrock, whatever it is, because you want to remember the destruction of the temple. You can't complete your home when we don't have the Beit HaMikdash. And where we put this zikr, right when we walk into our homes, opposite the door, right when you walk in, boom. You have to leave 48 centimeters by 48 centimeters. Leave the sheetrock. Do not finish that spot. You walk into your home and you remember, wow, no Beit HaMikdash. And my question is, why right there do you have to leave it? Exactly over there, right when you walk in? Why do you have to leave that spot right opposite when you walk into your home and you see that spot, the spot's right there. I think the reason is because sometimes the husband comes home or the wife might come home and they have a lot on their plate. They have a lot on their shoulders. They have some burden and they might just start venting to the spouse and they might start blaming the spouse and they might cause friction. When you walk into your home, the rabbis tell us, don't forget you don't have a Beit HaMikdash. We already lost the temple. Don't destroy another one. Don't destroy your home. Don't destroy your holy Beit HaMikdash that you have. There's already one Khurban Beit HaMikdash. Your home is a Beit HaMikdash. Don't destroy that. Realize what you're doing. Don't just come home and start throwing everything on the wife or on the husband and saying, ah, oh, then start picking on the small things. Your home is a very holy place. Your home is a Beit HaMikdash. Morav Rabotai. You're about to do one of the greatest things in your lives. You're about to get married, Berzat Hashem, with the right zivug. Realize that you're doing something unbelievable. Don't let the Yetzirah stop you. Be'ezat Hashem. Fight hard, Chazak. Pray to Borei Olam. And realize that your lives are unbelievably greater, different, for the better. The change for the unbelievable greater is phenomenal when one is zuchet to find their spouse. So what we're going to speak about today, Be'ezat Hashem, is what exactly should a girl be looking for when she wants to get married? And then we're going to be speaking about what should a boy be looking for when he wants to get married. There's a great rabbi in Yechavidat, Rabbi Sa'adon. I'm going back maybe 15 years ago. And I was praying in Acham Beit Knesset. 
and the rabbi was there also. And he went into Hachamu Vadya's office to go speak to the rabbi after the tefillah. Not everybody goes in right after the tefillah. He went in, he was speaking to the rabbi. Great, I was in the Beit Knesset. When he came out, he came over to me and he said, Yaakov, I just went into the rabbi for a beracha. My daughters, hopefully they're going to get married soon. I'm looking for a chatan. I wanted a beracha from the rabbi. And the rabbi told me, you know what you should look for when you're looking for a chatan for a boy for your daughters? I'm like, wow. Okay, let me know. What is it? Tell me, what is it? Imagine that. Hacham Ovadia, the Gadol Hador, whose time is priceless, who values Torah on a different level completely, you would think, okay, you're looking for a boy to get married? He's got to be a Tamir Hacham, all of Shas, Poskim, which is phenomenal, of course. The number one criteria, Hacham Ovadia told the rabbi, first thing, Midot, character traits. First thing you're looking for is midot character traits. Because a home, a house is built on Torah and on chesed. And the boy has to be on his level, looking to grow in Torah, looking to grow in his midot. Number one is midot. Something amazing we see in our Torah is that three times the Torah tells us about shiduchim that were made. Imagine that. The Torah is telling us about shiduchim that were made. It's not just, okay, Yitzchak got married. The Torah tells us how Yitzchak got married. It's not Yaakov got married. The Torah tells us how he got married. Moshe got married. The Torah doesn't tell us he just got married. The Torah tells us how he got married. Three shiduchim in the Torah. Yitzchak, Yaakov, and Moshe. The Torah tells us how they were made. And all three were made next to a well. How amazing is that, says the Sefer the Yosef. Three Shiduchim in the Torah, and they are all made next to a well. Eliezer, he goes to find a girl, a kala for Yitzchak, and he sees Rivka by a well. Yaakov, he sees Rachel by a well. Moshe, he sees the daughters of Yitro by a well. What do I care where they saw each other? It seems so insignificant. The Torah is telling me where they met. Does it make a difference if the first date was in a hotel lobby or is by a well? At the end of the day, they got married. Who cares where they met? If the Torah is telling us, that means it's very important. And the Torah is hinting to us. A marriage is built around a well. A well is where there's water. In Mayim Ela Torah. When you're coming to build a home, it has to be built with Torah. You have to have a rabbi. You have to be grounded in the Torah. It's not just you and your wife. Bore Olam is in the marriage. A home where the Shekhinah is going to rest. And another thing that we see is that not only in all three places the Shiduch happened by a well, but what we see is that there was a tremendous act of chesed. Eliezer, he sees Rivka, and Rivka comes and she starts giving him to drink, giving 10 camels to drink. Wow, look at that. Because when he's coming to build a home, there has to be Torah, there has to be Chesed. Yaakov, Rachel, he helps her, Chesed. Moshe, the daughters of Yitro, there's Chesed. A home is built on Torah and on Chesed. And what a girl should be looking for what a girl should be looking for when they're going to get married is that there's midot. There's a growth of Torah. It doesn't mean that the Khatan has to be the next Gadol Ador. It doesn't mean that he has to learn 20 hours a day. 19 is also good. But even if he's learning an hour a day, on his level, but he's growing. There's a growth orientation over there. A, he's growth oriented. He's growth oriented. He wants to grow. Wonderful. That's a great sign. They're looking for Torah. They're looking for Chesed. Because a home is not built just with the husband and the wife. It's built around the Be'er. There's got to be Torah. The home is a place where the Shekhinah rests. Something amazing we see 
in Megillat Esther. There's a pasuk in Megillat Esther, which, by the way, less than a week away from Purim, and I'm sure we all know that when we read Megillat Esther, men and ladies, we have to read the Megillat night in and the day. We have to hear every single word. Every single word in Megillat Esther is crucial. We can't miss one pasuk. We can't miss one word. Every pasuk is important. Needless to say, there's one pasuk that seems a little, I don't want to say unnecessary, but it seems a little unnecessary maybe. It says that after Esther was taken into the king's palace, Every day, Mordechai was going in front of the palace to know what's going to be with Esther. And the Yareh Mo'adim, he brings down the Khatam Sofer. And he says, if you really want to know what was the trigger of the miracle of Purim, if you really investigate, you want to know what was the cause of the miracle, Yesodo banui al gemilut chasdo shel Mordechai. It's the chesed that Mordechai did with Esther. Yetoma, she doesn't have a mother. He, she doesn't have a father. Vehu Mordechai gadol sanhedrin. He's such a great rabbi. Yeah, his time is priceless, and he's going and he's finding out how is she doing every single day. That is a great husband. He was married to Esther. That is a great husband. Every single day, finding out how is the wife doing? How is the wife doing? How is she feeling today? How is she feeling today? The husband has to be full of chesed. Thinking about the spouse, thinking about his wife, thinking about the children. And beschut that. He and Esther became the Shalichim to destroy Amalek. Unbelievable. A husband and a wife, they care for each other. He's the egg for his wife, he's caring. You're Zocher to become the Shaliach to destroy Amalek and to get the Beit HaMikdash built for Bnei Yisrael. Because when you're someone that gives and you're someone that's full of chesed and you care about your spouse, you care about your wife, that is of the greatest things that you could ever do. In your entire life, because you are building your home, you're building the Beit HaMikdash, nothing less than the Beit HaMikdash. That is what Mordechai and Esther are doing. That is Torah Chesed Aleshona. A home is a place where there's Torah, there's a place where there's growth, and there's a place where there's Chesed, where they're respectful to each other, and they care about each other. That is something unbelievable. That is a home. The Torah is telling us about three shiduchim that were made. Yitzchak's, Yaakov's, and Moshe's, all by a well. And a lot of chesed was there. Because that is how you build a home. Something amazing we see by the night of the chuppah. And boys, remember this good. Because soon Be'ezat Hashem, you're going to be zuchet to marry your kalot. And you're going to put the ring on her finger. And the minhag is that the ring goes on this finger of the kala. Kalot could get very confused. I was once under a chuppah where they tell the kala, okay, she had to stick out her ring finger. So naturally, she stuck out this finger, the ring finger. They say, no, the other one. She puts this one out. No, the, the other finger. Till she got the right finger. Hazita, she had no clue. She's trying to figure out which finger. The kalot, the minhag is, they stick out the right pointer finger. Why? Because in case she's ever going to think and blame the husband, ah, it's all your fault. She remembers, oh wait, but she agreed to take the finger. Th that was one answer someone said. I don't go for that, of course. But there's a different reason. Why this finger? Just do her the favor, take the ring off the finger and put on the right finger. Anyways, she didn't size this finger. She sized this finger. That's the ring finger. Why is it that when the Khatan is Mekadesh the Kala under the Chupah and he says the nine words, Hareat Mekudeshet, and he's going to Mekadesh the Kala, why is it that he puts it on this finger of the Kala? I saw a beautiful answer as well in the Sefer Levu Shosef. And he brings down, there are six phrases back to back in Tehillim that have five words. Each phrase has five words. Six phrases back to back. 
all have five words. The second word of all those phrases is Hashem's name. Those that didn't say Birkat Levana, we start tonight. We could start tonight. We say it in the Birkat Levana. The second word of all those phrases is Hashem's name. Torat Adonai Temima Meshivat Nafesh. Edut Adonai Neemana Machkimat Peti. Pikude Adonai Yesharim Mesameche Lev. Misvat Adonai Bara Meirat Enai. Mirat Adonai Tehora Omed Lahad. Mishpete Adonai Emet. Sadeku Yahdav. Six phrases, five words each. And the second word is always Hashem's name. We're reminding the Chatan and Kala, the finger that corresponds to Hashem's name in those Pesukim. He's putting the ring on this finger. He's reminding himself, he's reminding the Kala. They're not by themselves in the home. Bore Olam is coming to their house when they build the house the right way. A home is a place where there's Torah. A home is a place where there's Chesed. And what they're looking for in Chatan the Kalot are looking for someone that has chesed on their level, of course, but not forgetting that Eshet Rabbi Akiva Rachel, the great tzaddiket, she made Rabbi Akiva who he was. It's easy just to take a report card and uh, after a day, no, at the end of the day, live a ba'al nimshach acharishto. The wife changes the husband. And if the wife is growing, she's able to build her husband. Rabbi Akiva was an Amma Aretz. He didn't know Aleph Bet. He was 40 years old when he married Rachel. But she saw that he has good midot. She invested in Rabbi Akiva. She sends him to go learn for 12 years and then another 12 years and he comes back with 24,000 students. Unbelievable, Moray Rabutai. This is ridiculous. 24,000. And then, when they're coming back and entourage 24,000 students, Rachel, she comes, she sees Rabbi Akiva, she's going to Rabbi Akiva, and they start chewing her away. What are you doing? Get away from the rabbi. He says the famous words. What are you talking about? That you're kicking her away, that you're chewing her away. She says, he says, She leave Shalachem. He says, mine, Sheli. He says, Sheli, my Torah is Shelachem, and your Torah is all bizchut that lady. If it wasn't for her, none of this is happening. All this Torah, beautiful. But if it wasn't for her, where would it be? The lady is able to change the husband. Even if he's not that Rabbi Akiva yet, that person that you, but there's potential that's big. So don't get too concerned. Sometimes people might be looking for something, you know, that uh, they're too picky in there. I remember when I was, <laughs> when I was going on Shiduchim, I was talking to my rabbi, what I'm looking for, and I gave him the rundown. He said, Yaakov, what you're looking for is around an 80 year old lady that has perfected everything by now in life. And uh, you know, <laughs> it's not exactly gonna happen. You gotta realize people grow. You gotta realize that it takes time. You're not just gonna go and, beautiful, you, have, you can have all your shit you fought. But it takes time for a person to develop as long as they're growth oriented though. That is a very important and yeah, and that one is looking for. What are the boys looking for? Shalomu HaMelech said it best. Sheker achen vehevel hayofi, isha yirat Adonai hitit halal. Sheker achen, Grace, Yofi, the most important thing, says the wisest man that ever walked on the face of the earth. He says, is Yirat Hashem hi titalal. Unbelievable. He says, Yirat Hashem hi titalal. Look for a girl that has Yirat Shamayim. And the question is begging, what does that mean? 
Khen is not important. Yofi is not important. The Gemara even says the Khatkhila, a person cannot marry a girl until he sees her. So how could it be that Shilamu HaMelech is just dismissing what seems so important? Eh, Khen and Yofi, forget about it, just Yirat Hashem. That's all that matters. I once heard a beautiful perush that we know there are three mitzvot that a lady has, primary mitzvot, let's call it. As it says, There are three mitzvot that the ladies are checked for at the time of childbirth. These are their big mitzvot. One of them is nida, family purity. The second is chala, hafrashat chala, the kosher food. And making sure, of course, the food, the food in the house is kosher. And hadlakat haner. Those are the three mitzvot. What's hinted in this pasuk is that Shlomo HaMelech is telling the Khatanim that are looking for a kala, Sheker HaChen. HaChen is the letters Hey, Chet, and Nun. Hey is Halakat Haner. Chet is Chala. Nun is Nida. Sheker HaChen. If the girl is lying about the mitzvot and she doesn't have Yirat Shamayim, then Hevel HaYofi. Then forget anything else. Of course, Chen and Yofi is important, but it's not number one. The Yirat Hashem, that is number one. If she has Yirat Hashem, then number two, number three, very good. If they have Yirat Hashem, then they can look and continue looking if it's the right spouse for them. They can continue seeing if it's the right spouse, but if not then what is it worth? And with that, we can understand what Yaakov tells Esav. When Yaakov sees Esav, after many years, for the first time after many years, Esav sees Yaakov's family, and he sees all the children. He says, Yaakov, where would you get these children from? Mi elelach. And Yaakov says, Hayladim, asher chanan Elohim et avdecha. My children! Ah, God graced me with them. What is the question of Esav? And what is the answer of Yaakov? Esav is asking, who are they? Mi elelach. Esav, take a wild guess. You see an 11 year old, a 10 year old, a 9 year old, an 8 year old, a 7 year old. Tzitzit. They look mesudar. Mi elelach. Who do you think they are? Of course they're Yaakov's kids. And Yaakov says, oh, Hayladim, these are my kids. Asher chanan Elohim et avdecha. What's the question? What's the answer? I saw a beautiful perush. Esav was asking Yaakov, how do you have such phenomenal children? Mi elelach. Esav's kids are a bunch of barbarians probably. They're jumping around the wall uh, all over the place. You see Yaakov's kids? Ben Porat Yosef, Mesudar with the suit jacket and the pants and they look mis <laughs> They look proper and they look, make a cheshem shamayim. How in the world are your kids so good? Yaakov says, Hayladim, Asher Chanan, Elohim et Avdecha. Says Yaakov, Chanan. Chanan! That's the three mitzvot. Chalan, Nida, Ner. Beshut wife. The kids, they came up beshut wife. Asher Chanan, Elohim et Avdecha. A girl is looking for someone that has midot. Looking to grow. And a boy is looking for a girl that has Yirat Hashem. Remembering. Sometimes someone says, nah, I'm not ready to get married. I've had sometimes, sometimes Midim say, Rabbi, I don't know if I'm ready to get married. So I would ask, what do you mean you're not ready? What does that mean? What do you have to be ready for? What, what, what is that to get ready? What do you, what do you mean you're not ready? You don't, what, what do you, you don't have a tux? What do you, you don't have a suit? What, 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 what you're not ready? says, no, Rabbi, I, I don't know if I'm financially ready. I, I'm not asking if anyone speak to your rabbis. But sometimes I would tell them, if not many times, all the times, money? Dineros? Flus? That's what you're, that's what you're missing? I said, Habibi, your beracha comes beschut your wife. When you get married, you will have beracha. That's chizuk for the men. Sometimes they think they're not ready to get married or a girl might think, oh, he, he's not financially ready to get married. 
That's because he doesn't have any bills. So why should Hashem send him money? He doesn't have a wife. He doesn't have children. You want Hashem to give him a million dollars and do what with it? Buy another car and a Corvette and, 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 and have another house to live in? What, what do you, uh, the money comes when you need it. Bore Olam sends the Beracha. Yishtabach Shemo La'ad. Kol HaSharui Belo Isha. Sharui Belo Beracha. You get married, you have Beracha. The wife, she's the one that brings Beracha to the home. The wife is like Shabbat Kodesh. The same way Shabbat brings Beracha to our homes, the wife brings Beracha to our homes. Boys, what's the Mekora Beracha? Shabbos. Ki Mekor. We know the song. Ha Beracha. Shabbat is the Mekora Beracha. You know what brings beracha to our life? Shabbat. You keep Shabbat, you have beracha. If I had a few minutes, uh, uh, forget about it. Shabbat Shabbat. Speak about Shabbat Kodesh. Shabbat is the Mekorah beracha. You keep Shabbat, you have beracha. You have Shabbat in your life, you have beracha. You know what else brings beracha? Your wife. It's amazing because Shabbat is our wife. Shabbat is our wife. We call her Bo'ikala. Bo'ikala. Shabbat is our wife. So the same way Shabbat is our wife and she brings beracha, your physical wife brings beracha as well. Your wife brings beracha. He's trying to think, ah, the job, the settle, the this, and that. Habibi, Shabbat Shabbat. You get married, but it's the You have more beracha. Borei Olam sends the beracha. But that's me by it. You get married, but it's not be more beracha. The wife brings beracha the same way Shabbat brings beracha in a way. Shabbat is the mekorah beracha. The wife is the one that brings the beracha. As it says by Avraham, Ul Avraham hetiv ba'avura. Avraham got loaded. Bishchut who? One lady called Sarah. It was his wife. Avraham was not rich. And Avraham got loaded. Bishchut Sarah imenu. Now you want to get married, guys? Of course you want to get married. You want to get married before. Now you realize that money shouldn't stop anybody. Money shouldn't stop anybody. Speak to your rabbis, but money should not stop anybody because your wife brings the beracha. The Gemara tells us someone thinks they can have. The Gemara tells us, Kola Sharui Belo Isha. It's a different life. And with that, we can understand, Murav Rabotai, why we put the ring on this finger. Why do we put the ring on the Kala's finger, this finger? So you're probably thinking, Rabbi, you just said an answer a few minutes ago. You're right. I'll give you a different answer though. Bezat Hashem. We know there's 10 fingers, and there's also, I said it to the Birot, the Ten Commandments. Anuchi Hashem, lo yiyeh, lo tisa, zachor et, kavedet, lo tirzach, lo tinaf, lo tignov, lo tane, lo tachmod, the Ten Commandments. Unbelievable. 10 fingers and 10 commandments. The 10 fingers correspond to the 10 commandments. And if you put your fingers like this, and you start from the right side, and you go all the way to the left, this is the first, and that's the last. Guess what, guys? Which one corresponds to Shabbat? Shabbat is the fourth of the Ten Commandments. So if this is the first, Anuchi Hashem, Lo Yiyeh, Lo Tisa, Zachoret. This finger corresponds to Shabbat Kodesh. When the husband's getting married, he puts the ring on this finger. He's married to his wife. He's married to Shabbat Kodesh. Shabbat brings Barakha, your wife brings Barakha. It's all Bishchut the Isha. No, how are we going to make it? Ishta ba'ashem olad. Ha'ipaleh ma'ashem davar? Bore olam, takes care of everything. If you have emunah, there's no questions. And if you don't have emunah, then there's no answers. And when a person realizes that you're going to build a place for the shekhinah kavyachol, ishta ba'ashem olad, you don't think Hashem is going to help you? You think Hashem is going to leave you? We're less than a week away from Purim. Look at the miracles that happened to Bnei Yisrael. Bnei Yisrael, they were set up for a checkmate. Everything was lined up, they were done. Yir Gimel Adar, the date was set, Haman wanted to kill the Jewish people. Haman had the ring of Achashverosh. He was ready to sign, and he did sign. A Hashirosh signed with it. He led Haman to sign. The letters were sent out. The world was about to find out to kill the Jewish people. 
Haman's kids, and there were a lot of Amalekim as mayors and senators, so to speak, in the world. And they didn't like the Jewish people. Haman is second to the king. Everyone is bowing down. Everything is lined up for destruction for B'nai Israel. And what happens in no time? The next day, Haman is already hanging on a tree, and every Jew lives, and not one Jew died in any of the war. How did that happen? Everything just switched. Do you think there is something that God cannot do? All we have to do is to remember and to mitchazek in our emunan bitachon and to pray chazak. These are beautiful days for Bnei Yisrael, Adar Bet especially. And right as Purim is coming along, just a few days away, just a few days. Can you imagine the koach tefillah? Can you imagine what someone is able to do with the koach tefillah to pray chazak? Yeshuat Hashem Keheref Ayn. In no time, in no time, everything could switch. Just for the better, of course. In no time. Hayipale me Hashem Davar. I personally know a family back in Brooklyn, a very Hashu family in the community. A year ago, they had three children to get married. Three children, girls that were older. They had three children, one boy and two girls, one year ago. Today, the boy got married already. I was by that wedding. The girl got married, and the second girl is already engaged. We're not even nine months away, and all three are married or on the way to being married. Three, a year ago, they were all probably thinking, okay, you know, where, where, where's the Yeshua going to come from? Is there something God cannot do? God can do anything that He wants. Like deal with Bnei Yisrael, Azor the Bnei Yisrael, to help Bnei Yisrael, and to be there for Bnei Yisrael like He always is, to benefit Bnei Yisrael. You think you're by yourself? Whatever, Rabbi never. But Elam is always with us. But boys, I'd just like to share with you one last point. Look at the power of tefillah. Eliezer Eved Avraham. He was going to get a shiduch for Yitzchak Avinu. Eliezer. And he's praying. And the Torah tells us he didn't even finish praying yet, says the Torah. He didn't even finish praying. And already Rivka is coming and greeting him. Now, do you know what Eliezer was looking for? He was looking for a kala for Yitzchak, the son of Abraham. He, he was on the Mizbeach. Yitzchak is huge, huge. How are you going to find a kala? And where are you going, Bichlal? How are you going to find a kala for Yitzchak? And what does he say? The girl that's going to come and give me water and give water to my camels, Ya Habibi. You want to get a girl that's going to come and give you water and to your camels? You know what, how much water a camel could drink? It's the ship of the desert. If your mother asks you for a cup of water, <laughs> mom, come on. Okay, fine. You give her one cup. Imagine she dared to ask for the second cup. Hi, mom. Two cups. You have to go to the sink twice. She's giving a stranger and 10 camels that they don't drink a little water. 10 camels. A lot of water to drink. Anyone else would have said, Eliezer, you're a big boy, no? You're a big man? You're, you're a grown up? Here's a pail. There's the well. Help yourself. She doesn't do that. He wants a girl that's going to come and give him water. Uh huh. Uh huh. Talk about wishful thinking. <laughs> he didn't even finish praying yet, says the Pasuk. And he's already seeing Rifka. And she comes and she's giving him water and she's giving 10 camels to drink. He was shocked. He couldn't believe it. The power of prayer. Don't minimize the power of prayer. To pray to Borea Olam and lit chazik patifilah, especially as we get close to the time of Purim, and especially on Purim, Yeshuat Hashem, Kerefain, Shtabashimola Ad, in no time. In no time. That is the power of tefillah. Eshtecha kegefen Borea. Remember this one, boys. 
The Pasuk in Tehidim says, your wife, she's like grapes. As much as you want to find the perfect wife, but in a way, it's up to you to make her perfect. Your wife, she's like grapes. If you know what you're doing, unbelievable. You could get a, sh- a Merlot, you could get this unbelievable wine, Bajanin. And if you don't know what you're doing, vinegar. If you know how to treat and to respect your wife, you're able to see tremendous beracha. The beracha comes b'schut the wife. It's all b'schut the isha. And realizing the power of an isha. When someone gets married and they're going to build a home, they're going to build a mini Beit HaMikdash, you have no idea how much beracha you can have in your life. Everybody, thank you for coming tonight. Wish everyone here, Be'ezat Hashem, tremendous yata dishmaya. You should be zokhe to build Every single one of you, a beautiful bait name, man, be Israel. Allah tina to ravira, bektusha betahara, kedat moshe be Israel, banim u banot, sadikim vet sarkaniot, hochim bederecha Torah, betoch osher osher briut, vechom elite metav. She always okay to have tremendous clarity in the search for the zivuk bezat Hashem, which is going to be a quick search bezat Hashem, and bekarov to build a wonderful bait name, man, be Israel, bektusha betahara, amen, ve amen. The school is in a boat, and have a beautiful evening, everybody. Thank you, Ms. Rafi, for your tremendous remarks. <laughs> there's, be, there's, there's amazing food in the back. We have the amazing Shark Kani Yoda. If they can raise their hands, everyone, please introduce yourself to them. They will help you out. And thank everyone for joining us tonight.